and she tonight. I honor you because you are great and awesome God, you are mighty God. And so God, I thank you for this, this work that you have granted me to do for you. And so Lord God, I thank you, oh God, as I decrease and you increase, oh Father, tonight, I give you praise, I give you glory, I give you honor. I thank you for using even me, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, that I can touch the heart of someone. For Lord God, I thank you in the days that when I was running from your calling, but I thank you, Lord of God, that you have still given me this chance to go forward and to do what you have called me to do. I bless you tonight. I bless your people that are here tonight, oh God. I thank you for the word of God. For Lord God, I thank you, Lord God. For Lord God, you tell me that I must preach this message. And I know, oh God, we're going to all be to the glory and honor of you. And I give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. When I start planning this, and I start praying for speakers, and I got up to the last one, to the Spirit, and I asked the Holy Spirit, who shall I ask? He said, you. So I shut up. But you know, I thank God for my pastor, because we used to take a class here, come from the great truth of the Bible. And I said, you know something, I better go back in that book and look for something things out of that book. I had some stuff and I got some information from it. And I'm going to be able to give you all some tips to go home and read tonight at the, at the end of the lunch. I'm supposed to pick up about the Spirit. I'm talking about, when I say the Spirit, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that God has given to us. Your Spirit is the real you. The eternal you and it's the highest order of who people are. It is a part of your creating in the envy, created in the image of God. It is of those three parts of man. The spiritual, which is the personal highest state. The soul, which embodies emotion towards and filling of the body. Which is the flesh vehicle of humanity or not. And last night, almost everybody think was coming up with a vehicle. Some talk about vehicles, some talk about the bicycle. And then when I began to refresh my class, they were, I have the word vehicle in my um, in my message. So you don't know what, but this body is a vehicle. And that's what my daughter was pointing out last night. You know it is the Holy Spirit I am talking about tonight. The Spirit of the Holy Spirit, the third part of the Godhead. He is the God, the Holy Spirit person. If you go back in Genesis 3, 8 and 9, you will see the Holy Spirit will be in operation. Because, you know what happened there in Genesis 3. But my topic is going based on the scripture that Tuana, Sister Tuana read here tonight from Isaiah 61, and God said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He had set me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and to open the prison of them that are born. I might not be able to open a physical prison and a prison door, but to be able to tell them about Jesus Christ to open that spirit life that need to be released for the kingdom of God. Go back to my message, I would just highlight you to refresh your mind that that's the scripture that was read and it's based upon that scripture. And that scripture has been one of my, part of my beginning of my ministry in my book. In Genesis 3, we talk about sin. And if you read it, who in Genesis 3, and when they were hiding, who was hiding from God in, in the book of Genesis 3? When Jesus came down in the cold of the day, someone was there. Let me read it to you. Genesis 3, verses 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, God among the trees in the garden. Sinners have always hid themselves from the presence of God. 
as if they think that God is not seeing them. Adam and Eve, I say Adam and Eve, you know, they say Adam and Steve. Adam and Eve was trying to hide from God who sat on the throne of heaven. But let me tell you something. His faith go through and through the earth and in this world. He has a vision that only he can see with. You know, sometimes I sit and I am amazed that when I, when I listen to the count of Tom Payton, the top time I was listening to India and they were saying, they have 18, 8 million people. What my God? And our God could see all these people. So I'm saying, our oh God have eyes that can see the spirit all over this world. When God called out to Adam and Eve, he did it all in the direction of He didn't have to call them. He knew what they were doing. He knew what happened. He did it. He did not have to already because he already knew what would happen to him. See, he is our heavenly parents. And our earthly parents know at times what we are doing. You hear what Pastor Rima just had preaching in it. At this point, no, no, no. But our earthly parents, sometimes you go home and your earthly parents are doing it. So when you were, and you already know how, how the time of our parenting had not come before, and they had no idea. How in the world they know what happened before you could reach home? And sometimes you get your tail caught. When I say tail caught, they're not belt, it's a rope or a whip. They're beating you away before you reach home. So I wonder what kind of spirit was telling them way back then what we did. So, so our holy heavenly father is he has his eyes to see the spirit man eyes go down, God eyes go down, and he sees everything. We can hide as much as we want. So Adam and Eve thought they were hiding, but the spirit of God has already known what was taking place there. See, God called out to them and they began to hide. Why? Because he knew that they had already done what he told them not to do. You see, the Spirit of God moved through and through this earth. Let us remember we serve a God who did not sleep. Remember, Jesus told his disciples that he would send them the comforter, the helper of one who can convict the world of sin and righteousness and judgment. Me and you are not placed here to judge that spirit, but the Holy Spirit does that job. We are here to preach the word in season and out of season and let the spirit of the Holy Spirit produce conviction to that individual. The Holy, the Holy Spirit or the Spirit has power to renew men and women. The Holy Spirit wash us and renew us. It is his job to cleanse us so we can be God who God wants us to be. He can take the dead man or woman in trespasses and sin and make them alive. <laughs> Let us look back over our life. Let us look back over our life. And let us remember what the Spirit of God did when we were in our sin. The Spirit of God take and transform us. He impart to us God's nature so that we think God thought. Well, what will God will be for us? Love what God loved, my brethren. We should think the thought of God. We should hate what God hates. And we can preach until with the others swallow in on our feet and let the Holy Spirit make the change in our life. We could preach from now to kingdom come. We could go down the road right now with Father Bacchanale and preach but they're not hearing you right now. They're hearing a different tune. We may be hearing a song from heaven but they're hearing a song from hell. So we need to just trust God and we need to listen and can the Holy Spirit come in our life to make a change in our life? The Spirit of the Holy Spirit has power to give satisfaction. Hmm. 
when we look at John 4, 14, he said, But whosoever drinketh of that water, that I shall give him, shall never thirst. For the water that I shall give him, shall be in him as the well of water springing up unto everlasting life. The water that Jesus gave never stopped running. It continued to run as long as we abide in him. It is the Spirit of God. If we give ourselves up to him, it's an inflowing and an upspringing in our heart. And we will never turn. My mind, you see, this fountain will never stop running. If it gets choked from you, it's because your desire has stopped serving the King of Kings. Let us go back to him and he will unchoke your fountain because that water will start running that stop running, we begin to run in. He will stir up the spirit in you once again. Remember the law could not set us free from sin. Only the Holy Spirit does that. We was in bondage and the Holy Spirit and the law couldn't do nothing for us. You know, sometimes I have a, I have a, a tenant with a, a he cried to give me something. By the time he finished, you will join us in me. I look like I want to be in bondage. You know, like, like when I retire from work and people say, you're going to come back uh, to work. And I ask them, you see me look like I'm like, I have any strength on me. So you know that I don't have any bondage on me. I'm not in stress. So let us remember that if you step back from where God has put you, that you will be back in bondage. And your fountain will get clogged up, and you'll have to go back to him to get it unclean. He has to unplug it for you. We we have all been in bondage sometime. Some are still in bondage. And to talk about sin and death, boy, but you do not need that to be in God has provided a way to escape for us. That is the way by the Holy Spirit. You can live right. You cannot live right in your own strength. We must surrender to the Spirit to do all He called us to do. The Holy Spirit is all powerful. He shared in the work of the creation. The Holy Spirit is everywhere present. In Psalm 129, 7. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? The spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Holy Spirit is knowing. And like if you look in Psalm 139, what is one to let me tell you? The Holy Spirit was in the beginning in Genesis when God said, Let it be and let it talk. We think that the Holy Spirit wasn't in the beginning. Read your Bible, read Genesis. The Holy Spirit was there on the beginning. And it's still there. The, the gift of the Spirit and the weapon of our warfare. You know, last night, even that sister, when they were saying, when we go to the world, and I said, if I'm in an army and I went out to battle without training or weapon, we will lose the battle. If soldiers went out into battle without understanding the equipment, they will still lose the fight. Any defeat that the church suffer is because it either does not have the weapon of the warfare or they does not understand the equipment when it has to fight in this battle. You cannot fight this battle without the Spirit of God. You cannot fight this battle without the Spirit of God. For some of you that was not here last night, when I began to tell them how I had to battle in the Spirit of God to help my make sure that my daughters get on the flight to get home, 
I was worried in the spirit of God. And I have people worried in the spirit. We were fighting a battle. And when people say, it can't be solved. I need to come up with $500 more. I said, God, you got to take over. Yes. So we were worried in the spirit. And we were believing God for change. Yes. And she came home without spending the $500 on yesterday. Because we stick God faith. And I I had to tell my stay away from three to they go back to sleep at their last night. And we are battling because we know that God is still in control. The Spirit of God moves when you ask Him to move. This weapon that we have includes what? It includes the blood of Jesus Christ. Two. And it includes the Word of God. And it includes the name of Jesus. That's how sometimes, like the song right after the last time when we were blowing the trumpet, Jesus, Jesus. Sometimes I could say it's Jesus. I remember one day my husband and I was coming over the hill. I mean, I've been in truth. It's like I've been on that tent. Going home two weeks before death. But we driving, you know. And we driving and I was like, this person was driving right over and I followed Jesus. That's all I could say. I swear that he was going to ram that bad door. But the name of Jesus was the only thing you could say at the time of the tribulation. Our battle is in the spiritual world. But we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. And against the power of darkness. And against the spirit of, that enforces the enemy and the evil of all in the heavenly realm. He is up there trying to pull us back and pull some back into the world. But we need to stand out. We need to stand the world. Like Ezekiel said, I didn't see God. I didn't see any on the wall to stand in the gap. But let us stand in the gap. Let us stand on the wall and be on the gap with somebody tonight. Let the Spirit of God help us to do what we ought to do. We cannot do it unless we have the Holy Spirit to help us. These weapons have never left the church. The discerning of the Spirit. Read John 1 47. Jesus knows the heart of all men. Check out John 6, 64. There was the discerning of the Spirit. And we'll give you some lesson to go home and think about. I'll be true to my own words. The Spirit came after Jesus descended to heaven. He tells the disciple, I will send. The comforter. And the comforter could not come until Jesus went to heaven. He could not come because if Jesus was still on earth, the comforter would not have been there. But you know why Jesus had to send the comforter? Jesus' spirit alone could be in every all, all day. But the Holy Spirit is all over this world. It is all over. He is the standing gift of Jesus Christ. He is descended from Jesus. He has been descended to help us. He could not have descended from heaven until Jesus Christ went back to heaven to his Father. So the Holy Spirit is here to help us. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, abiding in the hearts of souls of believers in Christ. He is in your body tonight if you are trusting God. If you have accepted Christ, the Holy Spirit is there to help you. What better comforter you want? Sometimes, you ever been home and praising God and you feel like, all of a sudden you start to stop, you feel like you're laughing and then the next thing you're shouting and you're crying and that's the spirit of God. You start off, I have been saying, no, just read the word of God and the test. What am I crying? But when you read the word and take up the goodness of God and the spirit of God, just begin to manifest itself in you. And the tears begin to flow. You just have to thank God for his goodness and his mercy and his graciousness. I tell you, that's the vehicle we got here. Like my daughter said it, she talked about the three body, the three um bodies last night. Some of us was amazed to know that it's three bodies. She showed you the physical one. But she talked about the human one, and then she talked about the spiritual body, which is God, the spirit of God. He has the body. But let me tell you, if we don't treat it right, we will suffer. The spirit is true. 
and came on earth to help us. He will guide us into all truth. Read First John 13, 14. And take it from my book that I learned something in that class in uh, when Pastor was we teaching. I'm going to give you all something. So I'm going to go slowly so you can write right and go home and read it. We have the Spirit expressing His relationship to the Father. The Spirit of God, Matthew 3, 16. And for you all who write it, I'll repeat it. It's seven of them, and I got more. The Spirit of God, Matthew 3, 16. The Spirit of our God, 1 Corinthians 6, 11. The Spirit of the Lord is in Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord, Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Living God, 2 Corinthians 3, 3. Some of us might have the book, I told you, but you can back home and read your book and speak for anything of God. The book is a very great book. Me and Sister Smith always talk about the book, and we don't go in the book and do the lesson in the book and just read the scriptures. It's a great, great book. The truth of the Bible is a great book. The Spirit of your Father, Matthew 10, 20. When I began to do this, and I had to look at the Spirit of God, I can't say something. I said, you know something? I go and look in that book that preaches that pastor used to teach you. I believe I can find something about the spirit. And when I found it, when I flip the page and I found this one page of all the different spirits, I said, Good show. Good show. I did I start from give everybody something to talk down at the home and read. The spirit of glory and the spirit of God. First Peter 4 14. The spirit of glory and the spirit of God. First Peter 4 14. The promise of the Father, Acts 1, 4. I'm going to give you a different set now. Ready? Name expressing his relationship to the Son. Talk about, I'm talking about the Spirit, you know? So talk about the Spirit. The Spirit of Christ, Romans 8, 9. The Spirit of Jesus Christ, Philippians 1, 9. <clears throat> you all didn't know I was only five to me. I want to do doing it. I'm preaching, I need to preach about the world. Pastor, every time I talk to you, I should be She ran a call, you know. I was preaching, I'm like, she's one night, she's like, she hide it on her face one time when I said something, I can't tell her face. But you see, sometimes you don't teach it, you don't preach it like it's supposed to, talk. people will understand. They, but the young people will be all their time. They'll be all their time. Let me go back to these two points. The Spirit of Jesus, Acts 16, 7. The Spirit of His God, which is His Son, is Galatians 4, 6. You need to say the Spirit of His Son, which is God's Son, Galatians 4, 6. Another comforter, correctly, for John 14, 16. Name expressing his essential deity. One spirit, Ephesians 4, 4. Seven spirit. They talk about the completing perfect spirit and it's in Revelation 1, 4, 5, and 1. The Lord, the Spirit, 2 Corinthians 3, 18. The eternal spirit. See what spirit we have? See what a great God. Hebrews 9, 14. So when you sit down, come and you read all of this scripture. Embrace God for the Spirit. For how many talk about the Spirit of God? 
and when it goes back, I will see all of these different things. Oh, nice, that God, I didn't bring all of you. I'll be nice. But I'm tired of trying myself. Giving you the last set of spirits now. Naming spirits in the gift which he bestowed. The gift that he bestowed. The spirit of life. God bestowed the spirit of life to us. And that is in Romans 8, 2 and Revelation 11, 11. The spirit of holiness. Romans 1, 4. And as I said, I think of a preacher message in the States called Handling the Holies of Holiness. You have to handle the holiness of God in the right way. So, the spirit of holiness, you want to have the spirit of holiness to do what God wants us to do. The spirit of wisdom, Ephesians 1 17. The spirit of wisdom, Ephesians 1 17. The spirit of faith, 2 Corinthians 4 13. The spirit of truth, John 14 17. Chapter 16, 13. The spirit of grace. The spirit of grace. By grace I you saved through Jesus Christ. And that is Hebrews 10, 29. The spirit of adoption. Romans 8, 15. And the spirit of power. Love and sound mind. Talk about the mind. Talk about the mind. It's a long way to Spirit. May God Himself, the God of peace, sanctify you true and true. May you may your whole spirit, soul, body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians 5 23. See the Spirit want to work in our life. At each of us, these three levels, the spirit soul and body but this is the part of mind coming but it must begin within the area of the soul of our mind emotion and will and our will must take the lead in order for us to do what god wants us to do if your will do not take the lead but if you put the will it in your mind we talk in christ to what he was saying we have the battle of the mind we have the battle of faith we have that but if you don't take the, that is the spirit of God, because when I hear begin to read that say, spirit, body, soul, and spirit. Okay. Yet we need to refresh our mind about the things of the body. And we have to treat this body like it's supposed to be treated. And when we talk about the mind, knowing that everything is in our mind, our thoughts and everything is up in there. And our soul, and if you don't get it right with God, we don't reach, we don't reach out. And if the spirit man don't become lined up with the things of God, we don't miss heaven. I don't want us to miss heaven. I don't want you to miss heaven. I got a lot more for you. But because of time, I want to be very nice. Because I tell you, when I get back and I look at it, I need to go out of the go to my class and teach it. I need to do a lot of writing. And I start got a lot of that side, you know, and then to heaven. To know that our will. We put our will and the trust in God. What will God will do for us? When we trust, depend upon Him. When we take our spirit and say, God, here am I. Take me, use me to glory and your honor. All the stars will stay on us. Long ahead of the journey, we start to say, "My coming." I just, and to say, I just want to thank God to be used in the kingdom of God. Here am I, Lord, use me. Don't I have my daughter when I'm not going to 
I'll go ahead. We need to go there with it. Make sure that now that the next time we used to stay in our long ago, some of us would have made to be. We should go with them down. And what you see, they talk about the complete body. And this head hair can't do it on the neck, and the neck can't do it on the shoulders, and the shoulders can't do it on the heart, and everything and hair. Body, mind, soul, and spirit is lined up in the whole of this body. They talk when they talk about the spirit, man, they talk about the spirit lining up with the things of God and doing what God wants us to do. So I want to encourage you tonight. Get your spirit right. If it's not right, get your spirit right with God. Not with Sister Malone. Not with Pastor Malone. Not with Pastor Malone. Not with none of us today. But get your spirit right with God in order that you can live the life that God wants you to live. Because he is so common in coming from people that are prepared to go home. So I thank you, Lord, for this time, and I bless you all for being here, and I thank you for hearing what the Spirit of God has to say. I could go more, but I want to just read. <laughs>